speaking of restructures, here is more ways we could make or create money in 2021. So the first guy, Adrian Amos, came over from the Bears. Thank you, Bears, for that. It's been really good for us. If we restructured him, we could save $2.95 million. Now, what are your thoughts on this? All right. So first of all, just so everyone knows, restructuring, you want them to finish their contract if you're going to restructure them because what you're kind of doing is pushing the money back when you're going to give it to them. And if you restructure and they don't finish their contract, you're going to have a lot of dead cap. The Eagles have $31 million in dead cap for Carson Wentz this year. That's a little exaggeration of like what other teams probably experience with dead cap. Yeah. That's probably the biggest dead cap in history for one player. But yeah. so these players that we're talking about restructuring, me and Blake see a couple of them sticking with the Packers throughout their contracts and a couple of them we don't know yet. So that's why we're still going to be skeptical if we're restructuring those players. But Blake and I both see Adrian Amos finishing his contract. I think he's got two more years. Yeah, so all and these guys, yeah. all these guys, they have two more years. Um, so basically, if they finish their contract, like it's it's honestly great for us. But uh, if not, then there's a little dead cap. Yeah. So three mil for Amos. I think. I mean, it's not it's not a lot, but it is a lot. It can get us three more million dollars that we can yeah. spend this year. Yeah. And because of COVID, the cap this year will be a little lower. Since there weren't fans, it's projected to be – it was 170. I think now it's 180 million is the projected cap. It probably go up a little more from that. But the cap is lower this year than it was last year, and usually the cap doesn't go down. So the Packers are going to need to find ways to make room so they can bring back the MVP and Rodgers and also go with the win-now mentality. Yeah. So all this, if they were to – so we can go to Zadarius. Um, so Adrian Amos – Zadarius and Billy Turner. I think, I think I, I think both of us want all three of those guys to get restructured. Yep. I'm very confident they will finish their contract. They're, mm-hmm. they're, all three of those guys are on good valued contract for the production they have. Now the one in the top right is interesting, right? Preston Smith. So we could restructure him and create five million, and then he has like a pretty big cap hit next year, or we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but we could cut him and save about $8 million. We wouldn't have to pay him next year either. So he's someone interesting, but $32 million if they restructured these five players, a little over $32 million, that's a lot of money right now. That's like one-sixth of the cap space that could be created. Do you think we should do that for all these guys? I think we should do it for three of them. I don't think we should restructure – Preston Smith, I don't see him finishing. I see us cutting him. We'll talk more. I'll talk why I want to cut him later. Let's focus on the restructuring, guys. So, Zadarius Smith, definitely one of our best players on defense. He gets to the quarterback. He has fun doing it. He's proved it two years in a row. We picked him up from free agency two years ago, and he's had two great years for the Packers. Billy Turner got him from the Broncos. He can play on the right side of the line. He can play right guard, and he can play right tackle. And he's a good player. I want him around the next two years. And then Adrian Amos, he's just a fun guy. And he's a mentor for Darnell Savage, which is a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. I'm with you on those three. Preston Smith, I'm kind of on the fence here. He could be a decent restructure if he lives up to his first year. And then the the last four or five games of uh, the 2020 season, he played pretty good. It was just that first – like the first three-fourths games – like yeah. first 12, 10, 11, 12 games. He was playing at cornerback for some reason a couple of plays. He really wasn't, you know, holding his gap against the run, wasn't getting many sacks or pressures, and he really struggled. Um, but he did pick it up towards the end of the year. Maybe that's more to come. Maybe he, you know, came into camp like out of shape or whatever. I'm not going to speculate, but I don't think it's as clear cut as – He's for sure gone. I think he probably will get cut, and yeah. we can get into that now. So we've already cut uh, Ricky Wagner and Christian Kirksey, freeing up about $10 million, a little over $9 million in cap space. Now here's the other two guys that we've been thinking of. Should the Green Bay Packers cut Preston Smith mm-hmm. or Dean Lowry? What do you All think? Right. So I do want to cut Preston Smith. He Two years ago, it was the Smith brothers. 
Preston Smith. They were just having yeah. fun. They were both getting a bunch of sacks. It was so much fun to watch. This year, it was Ardarius Smith and Rashawn Gary. Rashawn Gary, we got him in the first round a few years ago from Michigan, one of the highest rated high school players other. And this year, he finally paid off. He showed us that, hey, he is yeah. a good player. And yeah. I see it being Rashawn Gary and Zadarius Smith this season and next season as well, which is why I don't think we need Preston Smith. I think he had a great year for us two years ago. He had a great end of the season this year, yeah. but he's not needed. And $8 million is a lot of money that can be used somewhere else for the Green Bay Packers. Um, before we talk about Lowry, here's another thing with Smith. So we could free up a lot, like I said, in 2021. We could free up three more million if we cut him as opposed to restructuring. But here's the thing, too. If we do cut Preston Smith and Rashawn Gary or or Zadarius gets injured, we are rolling out with like six, seventh round and undrafted free agents. And it's tough to say whether those guys will be healthy so far. They have been, like fingers crossed, right? But having him creates depth at a position that we've seen what our defense looks like when we don't have it. When we had the days of Nick Perry and Clay Matthews both washed and really not much, it was tough. It was it was hard watching that defense. Mm-hmm. So that's my only thing with cutting him is, yeah, he's not worth his contract. I I will say that right now. I do not think he's worth, you know, $16 million or – however much he is paid, but he's still a pretty good player. He's shown flashes in all the years he's been with us. If we can get him to play how he did the end of last year, I would be fine with restructuring him or keeping him. I really would be. Okay. Let's get into Dean Lowry now. Yeah. Um, He'd save us a little over three mil. Dean Lowry, he's all right. He's been a Packer for a few years, a decent amount of time now. And – I'd be fine with cutting him. I'd be fine with keeping him. I'm leaning towards cutting him, but he he has shown he's never popped off. He's never had, oh, my gosh, wow, what a season yeah. by Dean Lowry. He's had games. What a game by Dean Lowry. Yeah, he's like never had a, what a season. A touchdown or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm fully on the cut Dean Lowry train. I really did like him when we had him and he was pretty cheap and he showed like, Hey, this guy's got potential. He's paid six or 7 million right now. And he's not bad. He just, I feel like he really hasn't gotten that much better. And if we draft a guy, I think a rotation of, of deep. So it's three, four defensive ends, right? I think a rotation of yeah. Kiki Lancaster um, Clark can fill that role. You know, if we go Nick or whatever, um, and then we either draft the guy high or we go into free agency. That I, I think that would be better than having Dean Lowry. I wouldn't be completely opposed to keeping him. I just think there's probably better options. Yep. All right. 